Hi there, it's a short video on an introduction to Urban Analytics with Python. I'm going to do some presentation slides and then I'll hopefully show some Python code after that. So firstly, Urban Analytics, what is that? Um, it's a multidisciplinary field which has its roots in the social sciences such as urban planning and city design um, and leverages advances, recent advances in computer science, artificial intelligence, data science in general um, to inform decision making in these urban environments. We are utilising the huge volumes of data that are currently generated by devices in urban environments and we're doing that to make intelligent decisions. We're doing that to communicate real-time information to people that live and work in the city and we're also using the, that data to later on inform urban planning and policy making. Um, these large-scale data sets, they, they can be combined and they can be synthesised in different ways to get insight into these real-time events that go on in cities. You can also get insight into correlations between different data sets and different events, which can be interesting, can lead to new insights, and also to, as I said, to inform future decision-making and policy-making. So, where is the data coming from? We've now got a proliferation of different devices, IoT devices and sensors that can be um, put anywhere in a city environment and they can capture any kinds of data that they're um, capable of catching, temperature, air pollution, etc. We have cameras, these are deployed all over cities nowadays, generating unstructured data. And all of this stuff is now deployed en masse. We have mobile phones, we have wearables, and it's generating huge amounts of information that is, is then transmitted to databases and cloud storage where it can be analysed later on by data scientists and by urban analysts. So lots of data, that's the key driver in urban analytics. Um, and I'd also say that more important than ever is the subject now because of the current situation. As cities are trying to recover from the pandemic and also trying to transition to more environmentally friendly practices. We have the whole transport grid changing, uh, the transport network changing, the electric cars coming and all sorts of advances going on that will affect cities and there's a lot of data being generated that will need to be analysed in order for that to be done efficiently. So urban analytics is, is a very important and relevant field at the moment. Some applications, I'm going to quickly go through these. Smart buildings, so you have connected devices in different uh, in built environments that detect patterns and, and, and daily activities. That can be used to drive decisions about when the building opens, different decisions that go on through the day, when's the best time to do things, that kind of thing. Um, air quality and pollution monitoring, so even CO2 monitoring, any kind of the monitoring that can go on in an urban environment, we have sensors to do that. Similarly with traffic, traffic monitoring and management, that gives you real-time reports um, on the traffic situation and also intelligent street lights and whatnot to save electricity where possible. Fault reporting and maintenance, Sensors can detect when critical infrastructure is close to failing and they can report back on different metrics and that can help save money in the long run because if you detect when something's about to fail you can replace it quickly or fix it quickly without um, you know, the, the failure cascading in different ways. Security, um, one, of the, one of the things that's been, uh, Urban Analytics has been used for is crime prediction. So we analyse the trends of when and where crimes are happening over a period of time. And we deploy um, officers, police to uh, areas we think are most likely to have these issues. Finally, obviously planning, if you want to plan the best place for a new road or a new park, any kind of urban, um, a new building, anything, you can look at the existing data that you have and make inferences based on that or make decisions based on that. Ethical considerations, I'm going to quickly go through these. The danger of abundant surveillance of citizens obvious problem at the moment. Um, data protection as well, how do you securely store and anonymise uh, the data of the citizens in the urban environment? What are the dangers of you making policy decisions when you might not have the whole story? Um, so maybe you have data that favours a particular race or gender or maybe a particular class of people. That's very dangerous as well. Data gaps is a very related point to that. Some residents might not have the, you know, the technology or the connectivity to contribute their own thoughts on particular decisions that have been made um, and data might just not be getting generated for these people. And finally, a, a data science problem in general, 
the models being used for machine learning and deep learning are extremely complex. They're huge, you know, millions and billions of parameters in these models. How do we interpret that? It's a very difficult problem because they are essentially just numbers and it's a difficult one, especially when you're deploying safety critical, uh, safety critical systems such as self-driving cars and unmanned aerial vehicles, which might become a part of the city of the future. We need to understand the algorithms that drive these things. So different types of data. We have structured data, which is um, the most probably the most familiar type. It's just composed of rows and columns. The rows are observations at a particular point in time. The columns are whatever you're measuring. It may be um, air pollution measurements, maybe temperature, etc., etc. We have time series data in point two here. That's data that varies over time. Um, this is very common in urban data sets. Often in an urban environment, you're measuring think how things change over time, whether it's particular metrics or any other types of data. Um, so there are techniques you can use specifically for time series analysis. Point three here, we get a lot of unstructured data from videos, uh, from audio, from images that, that can be, these can be captured all throughout different environments in, the, in urban areas. Geo geospatial data, that's a very important type of data for urban an analytics. Data that has geographical features and types as a key component. Points, polygons, lines, these are vector data formats. And you often have things in a city environment that you want to model where they are, how close they are to other things. And geospatial data is how you do that. And finally, textual data, uh, which I'll just say is quickly captured in raw text. It's unstructured data, and you can do different types of analysis on that. Now we come to Python. Um, what is Python? It's a high-level general-purpose programming language that's now 30 years old. And in the past decade, Python has emerged as the main language in data analytics, machine learning, and in, in general, scientific computing. It's also very commonly used, as I said, general-purpose. It's used for scripting and automation. It's used for image processing, web development, and many other applications. Point number five here, it has excellent packages for integration with databases, uh, cash, uh, cash services, cloud platforms, and message queues and brokers. These are different types of infrastructure that are vital for big data environments. We need somewhere to store that data. Databases and, and uh, cloud platforms are, are some of the most common. Python has excellent tools for getting that data out from those platforms and performing whatever analysis that you want to perform on it. So that's important. And, but the final bullet points may be the most important for this field. Python has brilliant packages for data science, for machine learning, for visualising data, um, and for geospatial and network-based data. So we're going to look at some of these libraries now. Um, NumPy at the top here is a numerical computing library with an interface into C. It's very fast and it allows you to perform vector and array-based computations. Most of these below that build on top of NumPy. Pandas is a tabular analytics library, um, and that's similar to like Excel spreadsheets, but unlike Excel, you have the full power of Python's ecosystem available to you. Very convenient and useful. Point three, we have Matplotlib and Seaborn. These are data visualization libraries, key for visualizing data. Um, Scikit-learn is a generic machine learning toolkit in Python, which allows you to do classification, and regression, clustering, all sorts of machine learning tasks. Below that, we have PyTorch and TensorFlow, you're doing any deep learning, you're probably going to use these libraries. Um, points the two below that, GeoPandas and ArcPy are both geospatial libraries. Um, and as I said, GIS data, geospatial data, is very common in urban analytics. Below that, Foley, uh, sorry, NetworkX. Now, as I said, uh, networks and graphs, they are, they are key types of data in uh, urban environments. We have road networks, rail networks, bikes, bike betrayals, river networks, all kinds of networks form in these environments. So Network X actually gives you the, the opportunity to do analysis on that, such as saying what's the shortest path between two points, all kinds of different network-based tasks. The bottom two are more for visualization and dashboarding. We have Folium, which allows you to do interactive web maps that users can interact with, um, and Streamlit, which allows you to generate dashboards in Python. I'm going to quickly now move over to Jupyter Notebook, which is a, um, an environment for doing interactive Python coding. 
And what I'm going to do is we're reading in data on car parks, um, and I've got this link up here. It's rather messy um, JSON data from for car parks in Glasgow. Uh, so if we read that in, and then we clean up the data a bit, we're, we're going to extract it into extract the fields we're interested in into a pandas data frame. I mentioned pandas in the previous slide. What that does is take this this messy JSON data and it converts it into this nice tabular format. Um, so what, what, one thing to notice is, and this is a key task as I've said here, in any um, data, analyst, data analytics workflow, you need to clean the data. And we see just small anomalies like the ampersand is incorrectly represented. We have a tab uh, character there. So we can, what Pandas allows you to do very easily is define functions that can be used to clean up particular fields. So I'm applying that to the name field and I'm cleaning it up. And what that is doing essentially is, and also what I'm doing is converting the latitude and longitude um, columns to numerical types rather than strings, which is important. And that can, you can see that the things like the slash T, the tab and the ampersand are, are now gone. So that's slightly more clean, very basic example of data cleaning. Now we're going to come to GeoPandas and um, what, what you can see here is that you have a latitude and a longitude in the original data set, but we want to generate this geometry column that actually has a vector point data type. Um, so we can do that by calling the geodata frame on our original data frame and passing the longitude and latitude to generate that point column. And we get the points. Now we come to some mapping, just ignore that one, that's um, very quickly just to see that there are point objects there. Um, what we have here is, um, let's say we have a task we go to a given car park, the car park is closed. So we want to find the nearest car park to your location. So what I've done is create a function called get nearest, which for every single car park in the, in the data set, we'll look at all the other ones and figure out which is the nearest one to the, that particular car park. And it will return that into a new column called nearest car park. And you can see that Duke Street happens to be very close to Glasgow High Street. And I know, that, I know for sure that that's true. So that is working fine. SECC quite close to Canning Park as well. So that's an example of how we take the data we've got. We take the geometry column of all of our points and we can actually make some sort of intelligent decisions based on that geometry. Um, and yeah, there's the two, we can index into the columns in particular ways. Finally, I'm going to do a Folium map. This is a library for interactive mapping in Python and we're going to add some circles with a legend tooltip. If you look below here, you see that you get a map centred on Glasgow and it's interactive, you, you can hover over certain points and you get data. Uh, one final example, you can read in GeoJSON data, the first one is just JSON, but this is GeoJSON um, and this represents the three public parks in Glasgow. So again, I'm going to map this with Folium uh, using the GeoJSON helper and you see that we get the three parks, that's Pollock Park, and you get two more parks in the south of Glasgow. And these are actually, these are not point objects, they're polygons. So unlike the car parks, these are actually polygons because the, the parks have an area, they have a bounded area. Um, and you can also do, you can plot everything on the same map as I've done here. You can zoom in if you, if you want as well. Um, so Folium is interactive. That's a very basic example. There's a lot more we can do. This is the final operation of this tutorial. The geometry column is, um, has, is, is a, consists of areas, okay, with the, with the public parts. We have actually four parts here, there's one in North Lanarkshire. But the, uh, the polygon forms an area, and areas have the notion of a centroid, a centre of mass. And we can actually compute that with a simple attribute, it's available on GeoPandas uh, columns. And we can compute the centre of mass for each polygon, and then we can plot those. Um, again, using Folium to do that, and you see, if I zoom out a bit here, you see that the point, the centroid object is actually in the centre of that area, that polygon, and that demonstrates just one of many different types of operations you can do on geometry columns. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, please give me a shout if there's any questions. Thank you.